God bless you and welcome to Greater Destiny Ministries live stream Wednesday night Bible study. I am Bishop Jonathan Edward Lopez Sr. We're glad to have you tonight on this Wednesday evening. We pray that the Lord has been good to you and blessed you throughout this week. We pray that something will be said to help us along the way upon this Wednesday evening. And as always, we start our services with the word of prayer. Father God, we come before you tonight, Lord, thanking you for your many blessings, your love and kindness and tender mercy. We thank you for making ways, opening doors, and working miracles. You are a prayer answering God. Look down on us tonight. Strengthen our will and our desire to please you. Give us complete and total victory over everything that's not like you. By an adversary that will seek to come against us. We pray for the sick and the shut in. Those that are in the hospitals. Those on ventilators due to this COVID-19. We pray for those down on the Gulf Coast that are being hit by these hurricanes. We pray, Lord, that you will spare their lives that you would move in a mighty way. And we pray, Lord, that you would heal our country from this divisive racism and the administration. We pray that you speak peace right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you for what you've done, for what you're doing, and what you're going to do. These blessings we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, we're going to call your attention uh, this evening to the book of St. Luke chapter number 9 and one verse there verse number 62 St. Luke 9 62 this is Jesus talking and it said and Jesus said unto him no man having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. No man putting his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. We will use for a subject tonight. Don't look back. Don't get stuck in the past. Um, tonight Jesus is talking about discipleship. And he's letting us know once we start, we put our hand to the plow. And we know that plow is used for crops and planting seeds. And he said, once you put your hand to the plow or once you decide to follow him, then if you look back or keep looking back, you're not fit for the kingdom. Uh, what we mean here is if you know in the natural if a man plows he has to keep his eyes and his mind in front of him if he wants to plow straight if he plows what he does the lines have to be straight and if he looks back or looks around he can't keep his eyes on what he's doing so this is what he's talking about you got you got to keep your eyes ahead not looking behind now in the natural sense let's look at it this way all of us have had a past or all of us have done things in our past that we shouldn't have done we're not proud of and 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 sinful and so we, we might as well look at that. Uh, I think uh, if we look at that, every, every, every saint, every saved person has a past. You know, you don't get so saved that you don't have a past. Everybody has a past. But it also lets us know every sinner has a future. But we've all done things in the past that we shouldn't have done. Romans 3.23 says we have all sinned. And come short of the glory of God. So there are things that we have done. That are in our past. That we shouldn't have done. 
but you can't dwell on these things. You can't continue to dwell and hold on to these things. Doing that will hinder your progress. Uh, we have to be able to go forward. And the enemy brings these things up in our minds to slow us down, to stop us. So we have to go, we have to go forward. We have to get to the mountain. But dwelling on your past, dwelling on mishaps, problems, relationships, sins, and going over and over and over on them, they're not get, that's not getting you anywhere. You don't want to get stuck on these things. Now, we have to do like God told Lot. He told Lot after he brought him out of Sodom, get to the mountain. And many of us, the Lord have delivered us out of Sodom, Egypt. And he's telling us to get to the mountain get to a high place and one thing we find out when he talked to Lot and you can find this in Genesis chapter number 19 I think we're going to look at verse number 17 if you look at that let's just look at that right quick he told him and look at verse number 17 he said and it came to pass when they had brought them forth abroad, that he said, Escape for thy life. Now listen to this. Look not behind thee, neither stay thou in all the plain. Escape to the mountain, lest thou be consumed. So the part of the instruction was what? Do not look behind you. Set your eyes upon the mountain. Move toward that. But don't look behind you. Now, if you go, if you go over to verse number 26, stay in that same chapter. It said, but his wife looked back from behind him and she became a pillar of salt. Look at that. He gave them instruction, don't look behind. She looked behind. It was something in Sodom that still had her attention. And she looked behind. And the Bible said, now look what the scripture said. It didn't say she fell dead and nothing like that. It said she turned into a pillar of salt. Now what does that mean? That means from the point and the time that she looked back, there was no more progress. She never moved from that spot. And that's what dwelling in the past does. It keeps you from moving. It keeps you from making progress. It stops you. That's why we cannot get stuck in the past. Now the devil uses our past. To bring, he brings it up in our minds and sometimes by other people to keep us in bondage. He keeps trying to keep us there by keep bringing up Things and then it, a lot and here's another part of it. A lot of this he uses is 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 guilt. He knows that a lot of us feel guilty about things, so he uses that against us. He keeps bringing it up, and 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 then he brings this up to a point to where we can start to doubt, doubt Christ, and even doubt our salvation. The devil is cunning. He tell you. He'll tell you in a minute. He'll tell you in a minute you're not saved. How could you be doing all that? How could you be saved and you've done all that? You're not saved. See, but you have to keep in mind, the devil is a liar. He's a father of liars. So he tries to use this to keep us in bondage, to keep us constantly in a state of fluctuation. The Bible tells us we have to be stable. A double-minded man. See, he's unstable in all his ways. So he uses this to keep us off balance. So we have to get to the point where we understand that there is no positive 
in us going forward if we keep looking back at the negative. We can't we can't do that. We can't do that. He just he tries to do that just to keep us now he don't want you to go forward, but he don't mind you going in circles. Just going. He wants to keep us on a merry go round, just going around and around and around and around. Yes, one minute you're hot, the next minute you're cold. One minute you're on fire, the next minute you don't know what you're going to do. That's not, that's not good. That's not good. Um, Israel made the mistake. After God delivered them out of Egypt, after he worked those miracles to get them out of Egypt, they began to look back. Wanting to go back to Egypt after they've been delivered from Egypt. After the Lord has delivered you from, you don't want to go back to that. And that's what the devil does. He tries to put things in our mind. And I tell you one thing he tries to do, he, he'll try to fool your mind to make you think the thing the Lord delivered you out of was so good in the first place. That's not true. That's not true at all. We have to understand this. Uh, let's look at Numbers. Look at the book of Numbers. Chapter number 14, I believe, is the first one I want to go to. And let's look at that. Uh, he might try to make you think things are, uh, were so good where you are. When I, was, when I was in the world, I had so much fun. We had such a good time. You don't realize all the time you was, you was out there drunk, sick. In, in all kind of a terrible condition. Your life was in a terrible condition. So he always tries to put something, a spin on something that's not true. Now if you look at 14 chapter number, let, let's, let's, look at, let's look at that. See what the Lord said. Let's start at verse number 3 where they're talking. First they're complaining Talking about we wish we had died in Egypt. No, died in the wilderness. Look at verse number 3. And wherefore hath the Lord brought us into this land to fall by the sword, that our wives and our children should be a prey? Were it not better for us to return in Egypt? Listen to that. You see that? And they said one to another, let us make a captain and let us return into Egypt. Now, part of that was coming from that mixed multitude. Some of the Egyptians that came out of there with them wanted them to go back there. If you look uh, at the 11th chapter, stay in Numbers. Look at the 11th chapter. Stay right there. And look at look at verse number four. It says, And the mixed multitude that was among them fell a lusting, and the children of Israel also wept again, and said, Who shall give us flesh to eat? Now now watch this. I want you to watch verse number five. Watch this. It said, We remember the fish which we did eat in Egypt freely, the cucumbers and the melons and the leeks and the onions and the garlic. But now our soul is dried away. There's nothing <clears throat> at all beside this manna before our eyes. Now who gave them the manna? The Lord. But see, they don't want that. And then go back there talking about we remember the fish. We ate freely. That's a lie. They wouldn't eat nothing freely. They, they, they forgot how they was being beaten down there, making, making bricks without straw, how they were being abused. See, that's that mixed multitude talking about leeks, fish, and melons, and onions, and garlic, trying to make things sound so good back in Egypt. See, the devil always tried to pull a trick on you. To make you think what he brought you, and you you look around, to him, honey, you 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 out here now. But you're, the, look at look at the people you used to hang around with. Look at your friends, boy, they out there having the time. And look at you, 
Honey, I'd rather, I, what, the, what the psalmist said, I'd rather be a servant in the house of the Lord than to dwell in the tents of the wicked. Come on. That's what the devil, that's what the devil tried to do. Trying to bait us to go back in something God brought you out of. And I can tell you this right now, if you let the devil fool you, it's not going to end well. It's not going to end well. So these are things we have to, the Bible says, come out from among them. Be separate. So what did they do? They fooled around, disobeyed God. You know what happened? They stayed in that wilderness for 40 years. And that generation had to die. Now all of us are going to go through a wilderness experience. There are going to be times in our life where it gets rough. Seems like things are not going good. But we have to stay the course. We just have to stay the course. God will bring us out of that wilderness. But don't start going back in the past and start letting your mind go back in the past and getting stuck there. That's no good. That's no good. No, no, no. Don't look back. We have to go forward. We have to go forward. And, and, and then even in, in, in life issues, Things that are happening, things that go on in life, uh, problems with people, problems with relationships, problems with family. You have to, we, you have to get to a point where you have to be able to move forward. You can't get stuck on things where you just let, where you just let that anger you hold on to. Because if you if you hold on to, it, it's going to turn to hate. So, so you got to be willing to let things go. You have to, you have to be able to forgive. You have to be able to accept apologies you'll never get. Why? That's for you. That's to help you. Hating somebody is not going to help you. To forgive helps you. And we have to get to the point. We have there, there, there things. There have to be things that, in our mind, we have to ask the Lord to help us to let go. Because if we don't, that's going to be a problem for us. And God is telling us we have to get to the point where we let these things go. And this is what Paul talks. In his letter to the church at Philippi. Look at chapter number 3. And verse number 13. See what that says. Uh, Philippians. Chapter number 3. Verse number 13. Look what he says. Brethren. I count not myself to have apprehended. But this one thing I do. Look at that. He said, this one thing I got to do. Forgetting those things which are behind. And reaching forth unto those things which are before. No, I can't reach what's ahead of me until I forget those things that are behind me. You can't reach forward and look behind at the same time. That's why that's why we start off. Jesus said, if if, if you on plow, if you're looking back, you're not fit for the kingdom. So he said, first I have to forget those things that are behind. Then you're able to move forward. I can't reach until I forget what's behind. In other words, I can't reach forward until I close the door. That's what you got to do. Close the door on what's behind, then move forward. You can't move forward with all these open doors. You got to close them up. You got to close them up. He said, I reach, reaching for unto those things which are before. But look what he said. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. I want to reach so my mind can be like Jesus. 
One scripture said, consider him. Consider, consider Jesus. He said, if you don't consider him, if you try to deal with these things without the mind of Christ, the Bible says you'll faint. You'll faint in your own mind. These are things we have to keep in mind. We have to keep these things in mind. He said, let us therefore as many as be perfect, be thus minded, and if anything ye be otherwise minded, God shall reveal even this unto you. If, if your mind going the wrong way, God will show you. If you're sincere. If you're sincere, God will lead us and show us where to go. We have to get to the place. We can't get stuck in the past. People have been stuck in the past for years and years. And get not out of nothing. You'll be surprised. You get stuck like that. You'll be surprised how time, how fast time goes past you. You'll be surprised. So you don't want. We don't want to get caught up in that. Let things go. Just keep moving forward. Go forward in your life. Get to the mountain. Get. You know what does that mountain mean? The mountain is a high place. They were in the plains. He said, "Get out the plains." I'm destroying all that. But you get to the mountain. Now Lot got to the place and said he can't do it. He said, I can't get I can't get to the to the mountain. I got to reside in Zoar. Let me let me stay in Zoar. Well, your flesh gonna always tell you it can't do it. But God's not gonna tell us to do anything that we can't do, and another thing, the Lord will help us. If we are sincere, if we're seeking God, the Bible says, Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. God is a prayer answering God. So don't get stuck in the past. Somebody tonight needs to move on. It's time to quit looking back. It's time to make progress. This is your time to be blessed. And the devil will use anything at his disposal. The thief come not but to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus said, I am come that you might have life and that more abundantly. So accept that. We pray that something has been said to help you tonight. And we pray that if this has been a blessing to you, you'll be able to join us again on Sunday morning at... 11 a.m. We ask that you would join us and we want to let you know all these live stream videos will remain on Facebook for two days and then they'll be moved to my YouTube page, Bishop Jonathan E. Locus. And there you can watch all of my Sunday teaching and Wednesday teaching. You can see all of them. That'll be on YouTube. And if you would like to be a blessing to the ministry, feel free to do so. Cash app to dollar sign Shea, S H A E, 92977. Join us on Sunday at 11 a.m. and also join us again on Wednesday night at 7 p.m. May the Lord bless you and keep you. Is our prayer.